Här med sauerkraut, bratwurst och kartoffel. Hej, ni kul. Ja, alles klar. Tschüss. Ja, wie ihr seht, heute zu Gast uh, Learning German Lesson 2. Uh, zu Gast heute in unserem feinen Keller Armen am Off mit Olari und Johann. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Good, good. good. You're not tired after the work of, uh, I don't know, how many weeks in the studio or? Uh, months. Months? No, it's, 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 uh, it's nice to finally be, be ready. Yeah, it's, it's good to have a finished product in the hand. It's, it's kind of like when you're working in, in it, it's, it's kind of hard to, to get the big picture. But when you actually have the album and you can listen to it, it's, it's fucking great. So it, it feels good. At least you still use a studio. I mean, I have the feeling most bands uh, do it more or less at home these days. I mean, yeah, I guess only that's few the left who can afford it. For the or that's a way to save money, I guess. Yeah. Because I, I don't know, but we, we don't really see it that way. For us, an album, you know, that's something that's gonna is still gonna be around when we're not around. Yeah. And we really wanna put everything into it, to you know, to make it sound. Really As, good and, and yeah. I mean, sure, going to the studio is not uh, cheap, especially if you're gonna be there for for many months. Yeah. But for us, it's totally worth it. So there's never a temptation in taking uh, the advance of I don't know two million kroners from Metal Blade and uh, then just uh, record nice, home, <laughs> buy a nice house somewhere in this Stockholm suburbs. Yeah, of course, that's <laughs> tempting. I don't, I don't know. We might do it next time. <laughs> no, nah, I don't. For us, it's very important that it's really, really good, and you can't really get same professional production if you do it home or in a computer or you know. It's got to be the real thing. I wondered if you ever th thought about. If, I mean, if 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 you outside the band and look at the career of the band, I mean, the first albums, you know, One Sand from the Golden Hole, The Avenger, Crusher. It was like. You know, you were making your name, but it was like very small steps. I remember seeing you on a Crusher tour, and maybe 150 people at Seche Karl and Essen, and then the next tour versus the world, bang. So you ever thought about, hmm, what happened there? What did we do better, or, or where, where have we been luckier? I think, I, think, I don't know. I think one of, one of the key things is that we, we found a way to go more straight to the point with the way we wrote songs, I think, which kind of made them more accessible for a lot of people. Um, but I think there, there was a lot of factors to why Versus World became so successful. Um, we'd, we'd been touring quite a lot, uh, like previously, and we, we had a... We, we made a studio change which gave us a new boost uh, like while recording plus also the the way I remember it anyways is the feeling in the band when we were writing the album was there was so much energy going into the whole process from from everybody for the last album you touched some uh, territories we never have played before yes yeah. so, so uh, what's your impressions especially uh, on these exotic places, like, uh, did you say uh, India or something, yeah. or, or was it Thailand and uh, uh, India, Taiwan, Taiwan? China? So, so what's your, what's your impressions you got from those trips? <laughs> it was a lot of fun. India was amazing. Okay. It was uh, it was really good actually. Crazy fans, crazy people. A lot of people came to the show. Yeah. Um, and they are really metal heads, you know. It's, uh, yeah. For, for instance, China, I mean, it's, it's very cool to be there and play, but, you know, it was uh, maybe half the crowd were, were Western people, you know, people working in embassies or, or something like that. Yeah. But so it didn't really feel so real somehow. Yeah. So, because you expect to see Chinese people, but of course there was a lot of Chinese people as well, but there were so many Western people, and also the, the Chinese people, they don't look metal because probably in China you cannot have long hair as a guy. Yeah. Compared to India, where they're like, everybody has a made in t-shirt or, you know, all these uh, belts and all that, everybody's looking metal, everybody, they are like metal heads. So 
I thought India was really, really cool, and I really hope we can go back there. Mm -hmm. so, so how is that um, when you when you get contacted? I mean, I suppose they contact your uh, booking agency or, or management or whatever, and then uh, when you have offers like that, is it like do you play safe and say, okay, we need uh, that amount of money to cover it, or is it on places like that you say, come on, let's take five hundred dollars less than we probably need just to be there and experience something new. It depends on the situation, but yeah, that can happen. I mean, uh, for us, it's it's always nice to, to have experiences and and uh, and uh, you know go to new places and experience you know different cultures and uh, food. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got diarrhea in India? Actually, yeah. actually, uh, <laughs> I think you were maybe the only one, actually. <laughs> But I have a sensitive <laughs> stomach, so. So you don't mind, like, when you go to uh, places where, you know, the heavy metal, the, the rock and roll business isn't routine as it is here, that you have maybe not that great equipment or maybe not that great food or stuff well, like that. Well, we've been touring know. America for 10 years, so we're used to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for coming by. Well, thank you for having us. Thanks, <laughs> Samuel. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>